What is going on YouTube? I am TTG and today I wanted to show you guys something a bit different. This is going to be a little bit of an analysis of my old uh, Pokemon Darkrai Mewtwo deck. So this deck is one I used during the, uh, the uh, black and white onwards uh, standard rotation. So what that meant is at the time of this deck being used, which I keep in this uh, uh, Pokemon card tin, which was some fake Pokemon cards a long time ago I got this, as you can tell. What it basically meant is you could use cards from black and white onwards, and I'm thinking the newest card in this was maybe from Next Destinies, maybe a bit after that. I'm not entirely sure, probably a bit, maybe Dragon's Exalted or something like that, Dark Explorers. I know that's what the Dark Eye was from, those kinds of uh, expansions. So, uh... I actually have not looked at this in quite a long time, and uh, here are the cards in their uh, little, their nice sleeves, these N sleeves, and uh, just got them out there. What I wanted to show you guys is, yep, as I expected, the cards do uh, stick together, Ooh, so you can hear that as they uh, come apart. Yeah, so they are they are quite stuck together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to uh, basically sort them into Pokemon, trainers, and also uh, energies. And then we can have a little bit of a look at this deck, This which was quite a really quite a playable deck at the time. It was a really competitive one um, for a little while there. And uh, yeah, I thought it would be really good to uh, show, uh, show you guys, let, let you have a little look at um, at this deck. So I'm just going to sort it now. Okay guys, so I now do have them in those four piles and uh, basically what I wanted to do is go through all the uh, cards that I had in this deck and explain how it all worked and I think the best place to probably start is with the Pokemon because they are what you use to attack and essentially win the game. Um, with the help of the trainers. So, let me just get a good angle on that there. We have, to start off with, the Dark YEX. I played three of these guys. So what you would really use this for is um, its Night Spear attack. 3 for 90 was quite good at the time, plus that 30 to one of the opponent's benched Pokemon, which really could add up. This was a really nice card as well for its Dark Cloak ability, which meant that any, uh, each and any of your Pokemon that has any dark energy on it uh, has no retreat cost, which meant um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't in the format at the time, but you wouldn't need to run any float stones or anything like that. Um, really helpful uh, ability, and as you'll see with the uh, dark patch, dark claw engine that you use in this deck, it worked really nicely. Getting dark energy on that Pokemon really quickly made it hard to take down. Now, the uh, next attacker we have here, I'm just going to adjust the camera quickly, there we go. The next attacker we have here is this fine Mewtwo EX. Both the Darkrai and the Mewtwo are promo cards because I um, didn't have that much money to spend on making a deck and um, it was really helpful that the tins came out with these cards at the time which allowed me to play this very nice deck. Simple as, everybody knows this card, X-Ball, 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to both, both active Pokemon. Um, that was immense when it came out. This card came out in Next Destinies, and the tin came out not long after, and that's when I got one. I do actually have one of the uh, Next Destinies non-promo Mewtwo's, but I didn't use it in this deck, I think, because I was happy to just not damage it, and I wanted to have a second one anyway. Um, so we do also have this nice Tornadus EX. Maybe this card was a bit underplayed, um, and there's also an argument that this is uh, not the best of cards, maybe, uh, because it's free for 100 is nice, but it is an EX, and you do have to flip a coin with a potential discard if that is Tails. I use this simply because I ran 4 DCE, double colorless energy, and I felt like it would be good to have that extra attacking power, um, you know, and if you attach a darkness energy to it, because if you've got dark eye in play, it is still going to have free retreat, really helpful. It's blue blow for attack for a double colorless, also does 30 more damage, 
um, if there's a stadium card in play on top of its base 30, which meant you could actually, and I actually did at some point, get some donk wins, so turn one wins, because uh, if they had a soul uh, basic Pokemon with 60 HP or less, I could search my deck for the stadium cards that I do play, which I'll show you in the trainer section, and be hitting for 60 and get that turn one win. That's all the Pokemon that I would use to attack. Now, these um, these Sableye here, uh, they weren't used uh, as attackers in terms of doing damage, um, but it's for one Darkness Energy, it's Junk Hunt Attack, it can get two Trainer cards, uh, non-supporter, so I item cards, from your discard pile into your hand. So it's basically like a Junk Arm, if any of you guys know that from back in Heart Gold Soul Silver. Uh, except you don't have to discard anything from doing it, but it does take up your attack from the turn. Um, it is really helpful, uh, though, in the early game. I ran three of them, and of course, if you've got Dark Eye in play and a Darkness Energy attached to this card, you can retreat it for free. Really helpful. Now, this Keldeo, I would never really use it to attack. It's uh, 3 for 50, but does 20 more for each Water Energy attached to Keldeo. The reason why I use this is because of its rush in ability. Rush in ability. Um, once during your turn, you uh, can, if this on your bench, you can switch it into your active, um, and basically negate any retreat costs that may be on the active. Then, of course, if you would attach a darkness energy to this Pokemon, it can retreat for free again. So basically, the idea of this deck as well really being able to get that free retreat cost going, switching around, you know, so the uh, opponent's active Pokemon has a real tough time getting uh, knockouts um, due to the fact that you can have severely damaged Pokemon that you can just return back to your bench and make it that much harder for your opponent to knock them out. So I think we will go into the item cards next. And that is a really good segue for this card which I played. Pokemon Catcher, I played four copies. These are the legitimate Pokemon Catcher. There are no coin flips involved in these four cards. Simply switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of his or her benched Pokemon. Um, exact reprint of Gust of Wind from base set. Now, reason why this card was so good is because I'm already controlling what card I'm playing. Uh, what uh, card is my active through Darkrai and... Um, also rush in with Keldeo, and I am now also controlling what my opponent's active Pokemon is. It can be a really big help, especially against Pokemon, uh, opponents who have to evolve their Pokemon and play with a big bench. Um, of course, you would come up against a lot of Pokemon catches, and that is tough, um, but this deck makes it that little, uh, quite a significant amount less tough because you have that um, ability such as Rush In and uh, Dark Pulse. So you can, on your next turn, return to the active Pokemon you want. Crushing Hammer, I ran four of these. It is very good with a uh, Dark Ride deck like this just to simply disrupt your opponent's energy, disrupt your opponent's setup, and also if I go towards the back here, I ran two enhanced hammer here. This one is a Pokemon League promo, very nice. And that there were no there was no uh, coin flip involved with enhanced hammers, as a lot of you guys would know. You simply discard a special energy card attached to the opponent's Pokemon. Now, the other another way um aspect of this deck which I remember adding in at the end, and I don't think I ever got to use it that much, because this is a Plasma Freeze, I'm thinking, Plasma Freeze, Plasma Blast, one of the two uh, cards, so this is probably the last addition to this um, to this set, uh, so part of the Plasma Energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned, flip a coin, if heads, it's also asleep. Again, really helpful, similar to Hammers in a way, because it disrupts your opponent's setup without wasting your attack, really helpful. Um, you know, getting that extra damage on. And now, guys, also, you have to run your Verbank City Gym. I ran only the two of them. You don't need many more, in my opinion. Some people ran free. And, um, guys, that does actually uh, show off... <coughs> Excuse me. It does actually uh, help execute this blow-through attack from Tenatus. You're doing two for 30, plus the... Uh, if you get this Verbank out, you're now doing two for 60, 
and if you hypnotoxic laser them and you have the Verbank out, they are going to be hit with 90 damage because 30 damage between turns, it means anyone who can't get better than a uh, 90 damage, uh, sorry, 90 HP Pokemon up against me by turn 2 will uh, de probably lose. Uh, they'll probably get donked, provided Tinnatus isn't prized or any of those other aspects. Anyway, we have free energy switch. Pretty straightforward, moving basic energy from one of my uh, Pokemon to another one. Uh, that can be helpful if I have to get a darkness energy on one of my Pokemon because uh, I want to use Night Spear, you know, so I can um, retreat that Pokemon for free and then move the darkness energy back to my attacker. Very handy. Now, uh, I ran 4 Dark Patch. This is an absolute must in this deck. Um, attaching a basic uh, a basic darkness energy from my discard pile to one of my bench Pokemon. An option in this deck was also to run Dark Claw, and I did run it at the start, but I replaced that for the Plasma Engine, which I also used, which brings us towards the end of our... Uh, our uh, item section, straightforward again, Ultra Ball, discard two cards from your hands, can be helpful to get those darkness energies in the discard to bring back and put in one of my bench Pokemon. Anyway, discard two cards from my hand and search my deck for a Pokemon, necessary. Uh, maybe, arguably, four is not necessary, but since that was really the only way I had for searching for Pokemon, one of the only ways, um, it was really good, really handy. Now the supporters. Okay, I ran for Professor Juniper. Is that a good decision? Uh, maybe not. Definitely, probably not in this uh, in this current format where you've got things like Shame in, and you've just got a better way of holding on to the cards in your hand. But at the time, I felt like I needed to because I just wanted to get that maximum kind of run through of my uh, deck of cards. I ran free Skylar as well. I am not a big fan of Skylar using your uh, your um. Excuse me. Your supporter card for the turn, just to search for a single trainer card. But when you've got all these intricate parts of the deck, you know, and it can be the difference between if you've got a tornado out already and a stadium, it can be the difference between winning the game and having to play it out like normal or winning it on turn one. Uh, you know, it, it. I probably maybe could have got away with playing a bit less uh, Skylar and maybe subbing it for like a Tierno or something, the draw, draw free cards that would have been available at the time. But I also did play for N, that completes the supporter line. N, um, pretty simple, you know, shuffle your deck and draw a card for each of your remaining prize cards. Uh, pretty good, especially if you are, you know, losing the game and you might be able to create a comeback by putting your opponent in a position where they draw a hand of one or two. Now, this uh, energy is where I'm going to finish off. Seven darkness energy. You've got to have a lot of darkness energy in this deck so you can get that... Uh, you can get the uh, darkness energy in the discard dark patch and of course just using to power up your attacks and make Pokemon able to retreat freely. Also, four double colorless energy because uh, all the Pokemon in this deck you know, uh, they, they need uh, more than just Darkness Energy, even um, Mewtwo it's great for, Tornadus it's great for, uh, it's not really good for Darkrai that much because he only needs one Double Colorless Energy, but you've got to do what you've got to do. So yeah, that's basically the deck. Um, it was run by me in the Pokemon Black and White Onwards uh, era. I'll just show you guys some of the cards, the, the Pokemon cards again here. And it was really cool, really cheap, probably the most expensive card in it, I'm going to say, maybe the catches, the Pokemon catches at the time, they were like $10 cards uh, when they first came out, but they dropped quickly. Um, prob possibly maybe Keldeo, this is not even a, this is not a, um, oh no, it's like Legendary Collection or something. Pro probably this Tornado CX is the most expensive card in it, but none of them, I would say, are over, you know, 10 or $12 now. I'm not entirely sure. It was a really fun deck. It did win me uh, these two Victory Cup cards from Battle Roads tournaments. Uh, so not that bad. You know, it would have been nice to win one, but it was a very fun deck to play. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the deck or any, you know, general comments you'd like to uh, give to me, 
please feel free to do them. I love to get your feedback in the comment section. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to stay tuned for more. See you guys.